This video is a follow-up to the last one where we built our CLI News app. If you haven't checked that out, the link is in the description. Hey, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be refactoring CLI News in order to make it more close to a production-ready app. So some of the changes that we're going to do are as follows. We'll extract the get articles function and the relevant struct definitions into its own library, which we'll call new CLI. So there are two reasons for this. I wanted to demonstrate the process of extracting a library from an existing code base and what are some of the changes required in order to use the library from a consumer crate. And the second reason is to make the API available to be used by other applications, such as from a GUI application or from a web browser using Wasm. Now, if you got the hint, I'm gonna try to make those videos as well, provided there is enough interest. So let me know in the comments below. So the next change we'll do will be about our error handling strategy. So right now we're using the box dine error type, aka the catch all error type. Now in writing a library, it's not a good practice to be returning a box dine error because with box dine error, you lose the ability to check and handle for errors at compile time and instead have to rely on dynamic type casting of errors at runtime. So we'll define a custom error type and use that for our get articles API. We'll be using a crate called this error that will let us auto implement the standard library's error trait, which will make our custom error type composable with other errors and also save us a bit of time because if you were to implement this yourself, you'd have to write a lot of code such as this. So that's that. So next, we'll change the way we provide our API key into the top headlines endpoint. As you can see at present, the API key is hard-coded and from a security standpoint it's not a good practice because with a hard-coded URL what you can do is simply use the obj dump tool to examine the contents of the binary. So what I did here is I use the obj dump tool and I'm looking for the RO data segment of the built binary and I simply grep for 2c21 which happens to be a substring of the API key and as you can see in the rightmost column which lists the symbols in the RO data segment of the process you can see the hard-coded API there. Now this was possible because declaring a literal string such as this in Rust which is not a heap allocated string makes it part of the read-only data segment of the binary and so it's not a good idea to store secrets here. Now if you have any experience building backend systems it's a recommended practice to load secrets such as an API key from an environment variable and one way to do that is to load them via a .n file. So we'll use a crate called .n that will help us in loading the API key in an environment variable in a single line of code. So then we'll be swapping out the color crate in favor of a crate called Termimad. Now Termimad is a crate that lets us write down text in Markdown and it also provides us a theme API which you can use to apply multiple themes to how the Markdown appears on the terminal. So this will add a bit of customization to the presentation layer of our app. So anytime we want to make a change to how our news articles are rendered, we can do so by simply extending the API with a custom theme. So that's that. And finally, we'll use a third party cargo subcommand called cargo dev that will help us package our application into a Debian package. Now this only works works on a Debian Linux distribution. So if you happen to come across a different subcommand or a tool, definitely comment down with the link below. So yeah, we have a lot to cover in this session. So I'm gonna go write some code.
Okay, so we created the news API crate within our directory using the cargo new subcommand and passing in the lib flag and then moved the get articles function and the related type definitions into lib.rs. Then we updated the CLI news cargo.toml to depend on the news API crate by providing a relative path as its location. Now to access get articles and the article struct back in main, we need to import them using the use keyword as shown here, but that won't work because we need to tell in the news API crate what items we want to expose using the pub keyword. So as you can see here, we have the pub keyword being used in all the places where we need to access the fields and the type definitions back in main.rs. So items defined within module or a library are private by default unless prefixed with the pub keyword. So with those changes, our library extraction is done. Next, I'm going to define a custom error type for our news API crate. Okay, so we have defined our custom error type called news API error as an enum. Now you're absolutely free to use whatever type you want to represent the error with. In the most simplest of cases, you can even have an error type which is simply an empty struct. What's good with enums is that they give you the ability to club together different possibilities and represent them behind a single type. So that's how we have defined our error here using an enum. So next we replaced the box time error in our get articles function to now return a news API error. Now this won't work right off the bat because in all of the places where the function returns a result type, for example, the call method, the into string method, and the from store method, is that the error variant of the result type is not compatible with news API error. And what I mean by that is if you take a look at the call methods implementation and dig into the result type definition, you can see that this error type comes from the UREC crate. And that is another custom type that is defined within the UREC crate. So obviously the types don't match with the return type here. Now you might be wondering that, hey, how does box time error work here? And the reason is that box time error is special in the sense that all errors in Rust can automatically convert into box time error. And how that happens is a topic for another video, but I hope it makes sense. So what we have to do here is convert the error variant of the result type returned from call to an instance of the news API error. And to do that, what we can do is call map error, which is a method on the result type. And this method takes in a closure or a function as an argument. And the parameter to the function is the original error variant. And as a return value, we are returning a new instance of news API error, which is the request failed variant in this case. And similarly, we do the same for into string and fromster as well so with those changes we are now exposing custom error type from our news api library but there is one small issue that we have in our error handling strategy which is if you take a look at the map error method we are not passing in the underlying cause of the error as part of the return value which can strip off any additional context an end user might need to fix their issue. So a good practice with custom errors is to also include the underlying cause of the error. And to pass the underlying error, we have to make a small change in our error type definition and change the variant from a unit struct to a tuple struct. And to do that, I'll simply add a pair of parentheses and as the first element of the tuple struct will include the underlying cause of the error, which is URIC error in this case. And then we'll update how we instantiate 
initiate this error and initialize it by passing in the underlying cause of the error so this makes it compile so let's also make changes to other variants as well so in this case the error comes from the std io module and let's update the initialization to include the underlying error okay this works and similarly for the third variant in this case this comes from the cert json crate and let's also update the underlying error sweet so we're now passing the underlying errors as well so let's take it up for a spin and try to check for the error message by introducing an error ourselves so i'll mess around with the url here and try to pass in some junk url and then i'll go ahead and click on run and as you can see from the error output we have our custom error from the news api crate which wraps the underlying error which comes from the URAC crate. So yeah, we have successfully integrated a custom error type for CLI news. Next, let's extract the API key from our top headlines endpoint and load it from an environment variable. All right, so we added the .env crate, created the end file with our API key, and back in main.rs, we invoke the .env function, which loads the entries in our .env file in our current environment. And then we use the var function from the env module of the standard library to load our API key, which we then use to construct a new top headlines endpoint with the API key substituted. So we're using a macro call format, which lets you create strings where you can substitute values of your own. So in this case, I'm using two curly braces. The first curly brace will substitute the URL, which is our URL substring here without the API key. And the second is our API key. Awesome. So with this change, things sh should continue to work as before. So let's quickly test this out. Perfect. So next, let's replace the color crate with Termium Add. All right, so we added the Termimad crate and also a helper crate called Crossterm that we'll use to customize colors in our theme. We then create a theme.rs file with a default function. Within the function, we create a default MadSkin instance, which comes from the Termimad crate and customize it further using color APIs from the Crossterm crate and a few custom symbols for the markdown headings. And finally, return the skin at the end. Back in main, Within the render articles function, we call default from the theme module. And before we can call that, a module needs to be declared first using the mod keyword. So with our theme instance created, we use the print text 
method that lets you write strings in the markdown format. We then output the top headline string as an H1 header and then we iterate over the articles printing the title as a markdown code block and the URL as a markdown quote. And finally end it with a separator. So with our new theme changes in place, here is how the new output looks like. Awesome. So as you can see, our new theme already looks a lot nicer. You have the top headlines header and then you have the title and the URL and also the separator. So next for the final touch, let's use the cargo dev sub command to package CLI news as a Debian package so that we can distribute it and use it as any usual Linux application. So first we're going to install the cargo dev package. So let's run cargo install cargo dev and this might take a while for you but in my case i already have it installed so this was super quick and then using the tool is pretty simple we can run cargo dev and that should generate the package for us but it seems like there is an error here and cargo dev needs some additional info in our cargo.toml which is description license and an authors field so let's add that i'm gonna put a simple description then for the license i'm going to use mit and for the authors field which is an array i'm going to type in my alias and this should do it so let's read on cargo deb once again awesome so if you take a look we have our generated debian package in target slash debian folder and let's try to install this using dpkg tool and that works as well now let's open up a brand new terminal session so we can test if cli tool works properly so i'm in my home folder now and i'm gonna run cli news and looks like there is an issue here and it appears that cli news is not able to find our .m file because when we instantiated the .m file the .m library assumes that we have the .m file in our current directory which is not the case when we installed it as a debian package so what we can do is we can set our api key as an environment variable in the terminal session itself but in order for that to happen we're gonna have to make some changes to how the dot and library tries to load our environment variable so in this case i'm going to remove the question mark because i don't want dot n to exit early if it cannot find the dot and file but instead i want it to move ahead and try to load up the api key because we're going to set it up manually from our terminal session so once we have done that i'm going to go to my project folder once again and build and regenerate the project so that's our package let's go to target debian and let's install this once again and let's go back to our home folder and this time before we run cli news i'm going to go and set up our api key in the terminal session and then I'm going to run CLI news and this time we have it working. So there you go, a fun little session on refactoring our newsreader app. So I hope you learned something new and got some ideas to implement in your own projects. Thank you for staying with me this far and I'll see you in the next one.